Listen, if you're not already like strapped into something, go ahead and do me a favor and buckle up because today's match is an extremely good one and I've got a brand new super fun team that we're working with here. As always, hey, go ahead and check if you're subscribed. If you're not, hit the button. It's free, it only takes a second, and I'm on my way to 300k, and it would really mean a lot if you could help out. YouTuber stuff aside, we have a pretty crazy matchup here. My opponent is working with a snow team. No longer hail, and snow is extremely scary. There's some big threats that I've got to deal with, and it's going to make it a pretty interesting one. So let's get into the match. So to start things off here, I'm actually going to end up leading off with my evil ass Amoongus with the curtains, because... We cannot even see the haters with these things in front of our eyes. But also, I could try to get a spore off if he leads off with Lycanroc. And I actually have a good matchup against Obama Snow Because for some reason, this mushroom has the ability to absolutely beat the shit out of you with close combat. And I feel like not a lot of people are aware of that. Brute Bonnet is an extremely weird Pokemon that's not used too often. Uh, so try to catch him off guard with the close combat. And turns out he actually goes right into Gallade. Uh, who does soak that up, but Life Orb damage is going to do a lot. Non-stab close combat coming from the Shroom is able to chip this thing almost to half, which is actually really good uh, because this Gallade is definitely a threat to my team. The only real switch and I have to it is going to be my uh, fully defensive Quagsire. So I do want to save the Grinchy boy for later. That thing is actually going to be pretty useful if I can get some spores off and it matches up pretty well against his team. So I know that Quagsire can take at least two hits from this thing, plus I'm actually unaware. So if it wanted to try to Swords Dance in front of me, uh, Quagsire doesn't even see that shit. So he actually ends up going for the Will-O-Wisp, which... Um, if anybody wants to get burnt, I'm fine with Quagsire being the dude to take it, but I have not seen Will-O-Wisp on a Glade super often, so that's actually an interesting set there. So you're looking at this man's team, and it's like 80% made of ice, so I'm thinking I should try to get up some Stealth Rock here, there's going to be lots of switching, and a lot of his Pokemon are not going to super enjoy that. So I get the Stealth Rock up, as he actually brings in the Lycanroc, which is an interesting switch, I imagine he just wants to get his Stealth Rock up. Uh, however, you know, Quagsire has a great time against this dog anyway. My Earthquake is going to be limited in damage because of that burn. Um, but I do still have access to Surf. Unfortunately, they did my dude dirty in this generation. Scald is literally no longer a thing. And now you just have to go back to Surf. So Cowabunga asked Quagsire going to go for the Surf here. As he does actually end up setting up Stealth Rock of his own. It seems like he's going to prioritize getting Rocks up over keeping this Lycanroc alive. Because I do obviously have the Surf. It's going to be able to do a nice little two-hit KO here. And having the Stealth Rock up on my side is actually quite annoying. I know that my... Uh, Choice Scarf Staraptor actually does really well against his team. The problem is he can't switch into rocks too much. I actually do not have any hazard control on this team, of course, and so I gotta kind of play that thing safely now. So, at this point, I'm actually not gonna go for the Surf. Don't want to go for the predictable move here. I doubt he's gonna stay in here. He knows he can't get much damage on the Quagsire, so I decide to go for the Toxic instead, uh, expecting something like the Abomas Snow to come out, but it turns out it's actually gonna be the Frost Moth. So, the Toxic actually misses, which is like the worst feeling in the world. Toxic missing should not be allowed. They make the play there, and now this Moth just gets to come in for free as Quagsire's over here just getting burnt, taking a bite of an apple, getting burnt, and fucking like, repeat. Shout out to the Leftovers for doing the most and keeping me healthy here. Offsetting that burn damage is super nice. But here, I have a scary matchup because Frost Moth, I know is likely going to go for the Quiver Dance here, and if I can land a Toxic, I can try to limit... Uh, the amount of damage that this thing can do. But a, a Frozmoth in the snow with that 50% defense boost, uh, plus getting the special defense from the Quiver Dance and the speed and all that, this is a very scary moth. And I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of situations where Frozmoth is very scary, but this one in particular is set up pretty nicely here. So I do actually land the Toxic, which is great. Would have been nice to uh, get that one upon switching in, but that's totally fine. Now I'm thinking, who wants to come in on a Quiver Danced Moth over here? The answer is not really a whole lot. I know that Quagmire can at least take one attack from this thing and live. Um, so I actually just decide to stay in here and scout. I'm thinking maybe he even goes for the Quiver Dance again. But I really want to try to whittle this thing down to put it in chip range for something like uh, Sucker Punch from my uh, my Brute Bonnet. So he ends up going for the Ice Beam here. Quagmire soaks that shit up, giggity. And I just go right for the nice little Surf here to do pretty much negative damage. I just heal that boy <laughs> with the Surf. They say, hey, you're looking, you're looking a little, a little dry over there, my dude. Just moisturize you real quick. Um, and at least the poison jam damage is gonna stack up. However, I do actually have a relatively specially defensive mon on my team in the muck, and I also, I realize Quagmire is actually in range to potentially be able to take an attack from that Lycanroc later. Um, but I figure I probably shouldn't just stay in here and, and waste a turn. So I decided to switch into the muck. I know that I'm probably not gonna be able to take two attacks from this thing. And it's actually kind of a tough decision, because Muck actually matches up pretty well against some Mons on the team, but I decide to bring in Sup, he says howdy, and uh, they do end up going for the Ice Beam there. Freaking Bug Buzz would have been great. Ice Beam does 
just a little bit too much damage here, but the snow actually does stop. And that puts me in a situation where now this thing does not have the benefit of the 50% increase in defense. However, my Shadow Sneak being non-stab is likely not still going to be able to do enough. But uh, at least I'm able to conserve the Quagsire just in case, and I decide the only really thing I can do here is go for the Shadow Sneak. Doesn't quite do enough, but what it does do is puts this moth in range to where I believe the Toxic should take care of it. So one more Ice Beam is going to knock out the Muck, but shout out to the OG. Been using the same Muck set for like 12 years, and I think is an absolute legend. I'm telling you, people sleep on the Muck, but don't do it. He'll come and... My dude will poison jab your wife, he is not afraid. But down goes the Frost Moth, so that is a big sweeper out of the way. I really only had to trade Muck for it, and I'm feeling like, hey, that's that should be fine. Uh, now I have an empty battlefield, which is always interesting. I'm expecting him to go into potentially a bomb of snow here, but turns out it goes into the Avalug. So, for whatever reason, I decided I gotta try out using Rabska because this thing is way too cool to just not use. Now, Heimlich over here is an interesting set. This thing is actually bold uh, with max defense, and the idea is to be able to try to get up Calm Mines. I've got a defensive Terra of Fairy so that I can try to tank up some hits, but after some Calm Mines, I should be able to do some decent damage. Um, Shelf decides he does not like the matchup here, and he decides to bring in the Gallade. Um, so, Daywalker is an interesting matchup here, and I get up a nice little combine to start. Now, keep in mind, this thing is actually max defense bold. So, I know that if this thing is carrying Night Slash, I know that I can live at least one of them and fire back with a pretty nice little Dazzling Gleam. I could also try to burn my Terra, turn into Fairy. Uh, and really take that Night Slash. However, I don't I, I don't want to use it yet because I have a feeling in the back it's going to be useful. So, uh, the d idea is basically just to go for the Dazzling Gleam here. I know that we saw Will-O-Wisp on this Gallade earlier, so it's likely not full offensive. Uh, he actually ends up switching out and brings in the Abomasnow. Number 44 comes in, and that's actually that's fine by me because I haven't taken any damage. I got some leftovers over here, still got my Calm Mind. And hey, look at Rabska. La lasting for like more than two turns, this guy deserves a fucking trophy. So... I actually end up getting myself a nice little critical hit, doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and I'm thinking that this Obama Snow uh, wants to set up the Aurora Veil, which is not going to be good because I can't hit that hard regardless, but also this thing can't really hurt me, so it's kind of an interesting position here. Now I probably should have clicked Stored Power here, actually just go for another Dazzling Gleam, uh, but behind the Aurora Veil, um, I'm not going to be able to quite grab the kill. So, uh, this thing being in against me isn't the end of the world actually, I'm actually totally fine being able to stay in here potentially go for another calm mind and am i thinking you hold up is rabska kind of the goat i'm gonna go for another calm mind because fuck it i got my little brain spinning around here and i'm having myself a nice time goes for the blizzard and with just plus one special defense i'm actually able to take that pretty nicely now the problem is i can't let this thing get too whittled down or i'm not going to be able to take pretty much any hit uh, but i do still have that fairy terra in the back pocket in case Gallade tries to fuck around and go for a night slash so now, of course, I do have to attack. I could have actually gone for the Revival Blessing and brought back the Muck. However, it was mostly super useful against a Bomb of Snow anyway. And I figure I'm just going to go ahead and try to take this thing out. Because now I can say I got a kill with the Rab skill. Look at that. Stored Power is going to knock out uh, the Obama Snow. And now I'm sitting pretty nice with the uh, plus two special attack and special defense. And I'm already pretty defensively bulky. So Heimlich himself is out here doing it. Don't ever say I didn't provide love to the weird little shit bug. My main plan with this thing was to try to just build a set that like nobody would expect. In the Most of the time you see this thing, you're expecting probably uh, like Trick Room, but I mean, I just wanted to do something weird. So turns out he's actually gonna bring in the Bear Tick. Now this thing with this big ass bush is asserting its dominance because in the snow, I cannot really touch this thing. It's super fast with that slush rush. And I basically just have to qu uh, switch into Quagsar here uh, to try to just soak up a hit. So it goes for the Night Slash. I am actually able to live it, which is Actually kind of great. What that does do is it stalls out another turn of snow. Now with the Obama snow gone, he doesn't really have a reliable way of setting up the snow again. So what I have to do here is essentially basically accept the fact that old Icicle Beard is going to have an interesting time against my team. As I don't really have anything that outspeeds. Um, I do however have the Sucker Punch on the Brute Bonnet. So if I can whittle this thing down with its Life Orb, uh, we can try to see what happens. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to run through the team here. This guy has Balls of Steel, decides to go for the Liquidation. Uh, which is actually interesting because if I was water absorbed, Quagsire would have been in a great position, but I was unaware and, you know, the more popular ability for Quagsire. So, still a relatively safe play there. But uh, the Aurora Veil actually wears off, which is amazing. 
and now I get a free switch into whatever I want. So I have two options. Both Paldan Tauros Water can actually take an attack from this thing, uh, or I can try to go for the Sucker Punch with the boy Grinch. He's ready to come in here and steal Christmas. I do want to save the Tauros, because uh, I do actually see a late game uh, situation where that thing actually wins it for me. So I want to save that thing in the back pocket, as Grinch is basically just here for the Sucker Punch. With the Life Orb, unfortunately, I'm not able to quite take this thing out, but I'm thinking at least I did enough damage to where this thing's life orb should knock it out, right? He goes for the ice gold crash straight from his beard, and unfortunately, he actually does not go down to his own life orb. My dude's sitting at like one HP, and this, the hail is still up. Sorry, Snow, Game Freak, you can't be changing shit up on me, I swear to God. So now, plan B is this. I basically go into Heimlich, he's gonna take an attack and die, but that is fine because now guaranteed his life orb is gonna take care of it. And I have my two trump cards in the back pocket. That is Paldean Tauros, and the Choice Scarf Star Raptor. Without any more snow shenanigans, uh, Scarf Star Raptor should be able to outspeed and do a whole bunch of damage. Problem is, he still has four Pokemon left. Uh, the Night Slash does take care of me, but down goes the Bear Tick. So the sweep has been stopped short on two Pokemon. I've been fighting for my life against these damn things. Bear Tick only able to take care of a couple. Uh, the Frost Moth was very scary, but now the snow goes away, finally shivering my ass off over here, and I can bring in uh, the absolute goat, Paldean Tauros Water. I've got myself an interesting set for this thing, and I'm hoping I can make it happen. So, he decides to go into the coffee table, I bring out the evil-ass Tauros, and it's time to see if we can make this happen. So, the idea behind this Tauros, uh, I actually have the Kudchu ability with a Lychee Berry to raise my attack. I have Trailblaze to try to boost my speed, and Endure plus Reversal to try to get shit going. Endure is going to allow me to guarantee uh, that I can get that Berry going, and Trailblaze plays with that speed boost should put this thing in a nice position. So I also know that the, the Abelog actually doesn't have anything that can knock me out here. It ends up going for the Rapid Spin, which is totally fine. I actually don't really need that Stealth Rock too much anymore. Uh, but with that plus one speed boost from the uh, Trailblaze, that actually puts me in a spot where I believe now Tauros is actually faster than everything on their team. And if I can get myself in reversal range, it's gonna look like Tauros is in a nice spot here. So I decide to go for the Wave Crash, reason being I know that uh, this thing likely probably only has like Body Press or something to hit me with. Wave Crash, He's going to put it down pretty much into range here as it actually ends up going for the snowscape. So I thought he wasn't going to have any more snow. Guy said, psych, and he actually ends up having the snowscape on this thing. Um, so that is going to give him that 50% defense boost on the ice types. But um, like I said, this thing not being able to touch Tauros still puts me uh, in a position where if I can if I can get to reversal, <laughs> I, can, I can try to win here. So I decide to go for the Endure. I know that this thing probably can't knock me out of this range. Uh, but what Endure does is it guarantees that with, even with a critical hit, I'm able to live. So his body press is actually going to knock me down to 35. That does activate my Lychee Berry, boost my attacks, and I'm at plus one speed and plus one attack. And now it's looking like I'm, I'm getting to the point where reversal is going to start to be pretty damn scary. Um, so I decide to go for the Terra here. I'm going to go Terra fighting. I know with this thing's defense boost, um, I, you never know what to expect from this fucking iceberg. This thing is a, is a defensive threat. So I figure with the nice little extra stab from the Terra fighting, Reversal should be able to kick this thing's face in. So I get a nice little, <laughs> little punching glove on my head, and now it's ramming time, boys. Um, being at the HP that I am, it actually puts me in a good spot to cover for uh, the priority from the Lycanroc. So I go for the Reversal here with that plus one attack that is going to knock out the shelf, and that is pretty solid. This was actually the perfect Pokemon for me to set up uh, the Tauros again. So now the Kudchu actually activates, and bitch, you thought I was done with that Lychee Berry. Psych, I have one stored in the in, in the other cheek. So uh, now I'm at plus two attack, and this Tauros is positioned super well. So he decides to go into the Angry Dog, and <laughs> if this thing has the Accelerock, um, I should actually be able to live it, being able to resist that. But I am actually faster than this thing, so it would have to go for the priority, and not all of these things actually carry it. Turns out he does not have uh, any priority here, so being able to outspeed because of my nice little trailblaze, the angry dog goes down, and Tauros is getting the late game sweep that I had envisioned. And sometimes you gotta you gotta play the waiting game, you gotta play patient, uh, knowing the win conditions here. But his last Pokemon is gonna be that Gallade, who of course cannot outspeed the legend that is Tauros with the ter the trailblaze. Uh, trailblaze is an interesting move on this because you can actually position it to the point where if you can grab just like an easy kind of pick kill at that with like a Pokemon that has you know, not a lot of HP left, you really benefit from that speed boost. Um, because this thing really does need some extra speed. Uh, with the Kudchu and the Lychee Berry, if you get outsped, it's kind of, it puts you in a bad spot. But the snow goes away, it does not really matter because one nice little wave crash is going to end this man's life. Straight up skewered 
by the Toro. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the end of the match. Uh, that was actually a really close one. It kind of it could have gone either way there, uh, but luckily, Toros is the absolute goat. And do not sleep on the Paldean Toros. Water form, super fun to use. And uh, thank you guys for watching. As always, go ahead and leave a comment. I do read all of the comments, and I really appreciate all the support. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Hey, if for whatever reason you're still here at this late in the video, comment potato, and I'll like it or something.